of that terrorist group is looking to rebuild its influence following the death of its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, and the loss of its caliphate in Iraq and Syria. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano joins us. He's a vice president for national security and foreign policy at the Heritage Foundation. So we just heard uh, that Usman Khan, I mean, the guy serves half a sentence for terrorism. He's got an ankle bracelet on. He goes to a, a symposium, a study workshop to uh, re-educate uh, uh, prisoners that's being run by Cambridge University. And what does he do? He whips out a knife and kills two people and then runs on a, uh, uh, onto London Bridge. Doesn't this show how insidious, radical Islamic terrorism, that jihad philosophy is, and why it's, and how it's so hard to break? Well, this is particular a problem in Western Europe where they've had a, a large number of homegrown radicals. And, of course, they had the flood of refugees that came into Western Europe. So the, the U.K. has been tracking about 20 thousand Islamist extremists in the country. So that is a that's a bigger than a bed box problem. And between 24 and eight, uh, I think 2014 and 2018, they've had over 37 Islamist related terror attacks. So this is a present problem. You can understand the magnitude of the challenge that they're dealing with. So the question of why you're letting convicted felons out of prison early when you're already facing this mammoth issue, that, I think that's a reasonable question. And Jim, the number you just cited, I mean, it's unbelievable. 20,000 who could potentially be terrorists out on the street killing people. I mean, there's no way. I mean, is there really that the government that MI5 and MI6, I mean, they can actually track and keep track of these people? I mean, this guy had an ankle bracelet on. Police know about him. He'd been released. He's, he's undergoing those. Uh, he's, he's at the Cambridge University Symposium and whips out a knife and kills people at the symposium dedicated to re-educating prisoners. Well, Europe's look, Europe and Britain in particular are paying the butcher's bill for some really bad policy. It wasn't really until 2010 that Britain even started to take this seriously. They had a their strategy was protect and, and essentially they were going to go out and engage with the community to prevent this. And they were in, they, they were engaging with the most radical elements of the British Islamic society to help them deal with the issue of terrorism. They've done better recently, but but honestly, they've been distracted by Brexit. That's why I, I think, you know, Johnson's approach, which is we've got to get serious about that. We get put Brexit behind us. We need to focus back on public safety. I think his his approach is exactly right. The organizer of, uh, of the group, uh, according to his father, uh, a young man, a Cambridge University official was uh, apparently killed in this. I mean, is it does this show that can they be rehabilitated? Is that even in the realm of possibilities? Once you adhere to that philosophy, which to them is a religious, deeply held zeal to kill the infidels who are us, can, can that change? Can that be changed well, so they can be productive citizens of a civilized society? Well, I, I, what's really key, what, you know, we can't get in the mind of every inf individual. What countries can do is they can break the back of the networks, and this is really important. So I know ISIS claim responsibility for this. They claim responsibility for everything. What's really key is it doesn't look like this is an organized network of attacks, um, and that is and that gets the level of violence down. I mean, one thing I'm proudest about the British is look at the police response, which was exactly right, uh, apparently, and, and quick and really limited uh, the, the damage that this guy could have done. I mean, I think that's really the best you can do. I mean, look at the people response. You know, we, we're used to it now on airplanes. But look at the people who uh, took a fire extinguisher. The other guy got that uh, yeah. uh, uh, hook, you know, from the museum and, and brought it out, that NAWAL. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, long thing to try and attack the guy. So this shows that it is up to us. They say, say something, see something. Right. We are the front line in the war on terrorism, each and every one of us, wherever we live. I mean, we've seen this since since 9-11. Remember the, 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 the passengers that, tr that tried to, to prevent the plane from being hijacked that went down in Pennsylvania. So this has always been the best defense. And that's why this low level terrorism, it, it's it's terrible and it's da damning and it's tragic. But it, it our societies are way more resilient than that. And, th and that's where I do think we have to strike this balance. You can say, well, we have to go out there and take these extremist communities apart. But we also have to defend freedom of speech, freedom of religion. And so we have to we have to to measure both of those. And so it's why good, strong public safety is really the best thing. And in, in American society and, and, and our allies that are in engaged and resilient, that these terrorists can go nowhere against us if yeah. we follow that. Yeah, the, the president will be in uh, London uh, this coming week for the NATO uh, meeting celebration of the 70th anniversary and other issues. Do you expect him to address this? I mean, NATO is, is, is formed to face the old Soviet Union, Russia. Now they're moving to China. Uh, is there a way to bring them in 
because all law enforcement globally, I think, needs to deal with the terrorist problem. Well, the, the, the president has before said that NATO needs to focus on terrorism. And I think there is something to that. For, of course, NATO is with the United States and Afghanistan, trying to hold the line against the Taliban. That's important. I think there are things NATO can contribute within the community and within supporting friends and allies who are doing this. It, it's, it's something they totally have the capacity to do. It's not the primary focus of collective defense, but it is something they should do. And the president's actually been a leader in kind of getting that balance, trying to get that balance right. You know, who would ever think that a narwhal tusk is what that uh, fellow took from the wall and, you know, grabbed it? Use anything. Fire extinguishers, use whatever you have when you've got an active shooter, if you've got a terrorist jihadi madman. That's right. Uh, like it's the same formula. Guy. I know. Uh, it is us against uh, the radical jihad militants. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, thank you for your thoughts. Thanks for having me, of course. And there's breaking news.